So this is Dr. M. Maheswar Rao, Assistant Professor, Department of Civil Engineering, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. So our course name is Fluid Mechanics and the topic is distinction between a fluid and solid. Here the distinction means the differences between any two things. So here two things are there, one is a fluid, another one is a solid. The difference between fluid and solid is that a fluid is a material which can flow freely on the application of a pressure or load, whereas the solid is also a material which is not free to move. That means there will be a strain in the solids. So that is also within the elastic limits, it regains its original position. And fluids will not gain its original position after removal of any external application of the load. So today we are going to discuss the distinction between a fluid and a solid. Before going to the course, so we have to know the course outcomes. So that means at the end of the course, students should be able to uh, all these things. So should be, students should be able to define a fluid and its properties. Here, the students can understand what is the fluid and what are the properties of the completion of the this course. And uh, uh, also able to describe surface tension. So surface tension is also a, another property, a very, very important property for the fluids. So the students can be able to uh, describe the surface tension and relations in different conditions. So how they are related with the different conditions. So those will be known by the end of the course. And another course outcome is CO2. That means course outcome to here. The important thing is that Newton's law of viscosity. So here viscosity is nothing but the resistance to flow. So those uh, liquids will show the viscosity. So the liquids are uh, fluids. The fluids and liquids, the difference is that a fluid can be divided into two types. So one is that a fluid, a liquid is a fluid and a gas is a fluid. So these liquids and gases will come under the fluids. So those fluids which obey the Newton's law of viscosity, those are called uh, Newtonian fluids. And whereas on, in the other side, that means the fluids which will not obey the Newton's law of viscosity, they are called non-Newtonian fluids. So here, uh, students should be able to explain what is the Newton's law of viscosity and uh, classify fluids based on the Newton's law of viscosity. So students uh, will know the classification of fluids based on the Newton's law of viscosity and also they can solve the problems on the viscosity. And course outcome 3, that is CO3. So students able to employ capillary principle. Here capillarity is one thing is there. So capillarity is nothing but the, if you keep a small pipe in a liquid or fluid, uh, liquid will rise, some of the liquids will rise uh, in the small pipe comparing to the original surface level. Whereas some fluid, some liquids will fall below the original surface level. So that is called a capillarity. So capillarity rise and capillarity fall. So these students uh, can be know the capillarity principles and they can have also cal able to calculate the capillary rise and fall. So what is the amount of rise? What is the amount of fall? In a given small tube, and whereas the course outcome four, that is CO4. So here, student able to understand the concept of surface tension. So here, what is the concept behind the surface tension, and uh, where this will be applicable? So where it is applied. So that also can be known after completion of this course outcome. So then, course outcome five. I uh, know the students should be able to know the concept of capillarity and compressibility. Here, capillarity is there, 
and compressibility. That capillarity is what is the capillarity already discussed. So, what is that? Capillarity is nothing but a the amount of rise of level or amount of fall in the level of its original surface level, top of surface of a liquid. So, that is called a capillarity. So, the concept behind the capillarity the students will understand and as, as well as compressibility. So, compressibility means what? It is change in volume. So, if volume is changed, that means if a bigger volume, if you apply a force, the volume will be reduced, which is called a compressibility. Some fluids will not compress. So, they are called incompressible fluids. So, if you take the gas, so gas is a uh, molecules very far away, then if you apply a load, it will be compressed very much. Whereas the water, it, it cannot be compressed. So, you can take it granted it as a incompressible fluid. So, here compressibility is zero uh, compared to the uh, gases. So, the water will not have any compressibility, whereas gas will have highest compressibility. That is the course outcome 5. Then course outcome 6. So here the student will be able to examine the basic ideas of pipe flow. Here this thing is that pipe flow. Pipe flow means uh, the liquid flowing in a pipe. So what are the different things belongs to the pipe flow. So you can see there loss of uh, uh, fluid friction. So here friction is the matter. Whenever something is flowing, so that means uh, the liquid will flow inside the pipe. So there will be two different surfaces. One is pipe material surface and liquid material surface. Wherever both the surface are touching, they will uh, ha there will be friction will exist. So how this friction will uh, impact onto the pipe or flow of uh, liquid. So those are the laws of fluid friction. So why should we know this? This means for determining the fluid pressure. So what will be the pressure? So based upon the friction inside the flow, flow in a pipe, so we will calculate the fluid pressure. So what is the pressure exists inside the fluid? and head at different nodes in the pipe. Here, head, head is nothing but the uh, rise of water uh, depending upon the energy levels. So if any water, any liquid flowing from one point to another point, it loses some energy. So because uh, that is due to uh, friction existing in the fluid on the surface of the pipe flow. So, because of this uh, friction, the total energy will be reduced from comparing to one point to another point if a fluid travels inside the pipe. So, that is called head. Here, head is nothing but the energy. So, energy at uh, one point, starting point, and energy at the some other distance point will definitely uh, different because at a starting point it will have uh, total energy maximum and whereas there is certain distance if it is travelled because of the friction head will be lowered. So that is a different nodes in pipe network. Here nodes, nodes means any point in the length of the pipe. So at 100 meter distance if you take a point that is called a node. If uh, after one kilometer length of the pipe if you take one point, that is called a node. So, at different distances, uh, nodes means here points, at different distances, the head is different because the frictional losses are there uh, in the pipe flow. So, that is the uh, course outcome 6. So, the students are uh, able to examine these pipe flow ideas and how the fluids are losing its uh, energy, that means head. Differences between solids and liquids. Now, we are going to deal with the differences between the solids and liquids. I already told you the solid and the liquid. So, the solid is a rigid material 
whereas uh, liquid is a non-rigid material, it is a fluid. So if you see the differences, here you can see the, the strain, main thing is the strain and stress. You see if you apply a load on any material, uh, the change in deformation is called the strain and load by area that is called the stress. So if you increase the stresses, the strain also will increase. That means if you increase uh, more load and change in dimension also will be more. So it is directly proportional. Stress is directly proportional to the strain. That means the strain is a function of the stress. Here, the difference between the solids and fluids. That means here, stress and strain function. That means the stress is directly proportional to strain or strain is directly proportional to stress. It is a different uh, for a solid and for a fluid. Okay. Here the difference is that the elastic limit. The elastic limit means is that nothing but after removal of the force, the material regains its original shape. That is called elastic limit. If you apply a load beyond the elastic limit, the material will not regain its original shape. That is the elastic limit. Here the thing is that the solid will maintain a stress and strain proportionality within the elastic limits. If elastic limit is not exceeded, then the strain is proportion, directly proportional to the stress for a solid. So in case of fluids, it is not like that. There is no such elastic limit there and there is no regain of its original position, original shape. Okay, the rate of strain is proportional to the applied stress. Here, strain and stress are proportional. The thing is that it will not regain its original shape, original position. So, but the solids will uh, get original position after removal of the load. That also within the elastic limit. So, but fluids will never gain its original position after removal of the load. So, the difference here the solid and the fluid is that regain of its original position and not regaining of its original position. The solids will regain original position, original shape, whereas the fluid will not get original shape after removal of the load or stress. So here, uh, strain is a function of the stress. So in the elastic limit, the solids will have proportionality, whereas fluids also will have proportionality, that means strain is proportional to or directly proportional to stress. So that is both is valid for the solids and fluids, but whereas more and more loads are applied, the solids will cross the elastic limit. So, so beyond the elastic limit, the solids, then the stress is or strain is not proportional to the stress. That means it is not a linear, it is a curvilinear. So that is the difference between a solid and a liquid. So if you can see other differences also here. Here you can see the words important key points are elastic limit, deformation, disappears, continues to flow. So these are the key points here. So the strain in a solid is independent of the time. So here, time is uh, here the strain is uh, independent of the time, not dependent on the time. So R over with the force is applied. If it, the elastic limit is not exceeded, so if the stress is removed, so the deformation will disappear. That means it will regain its its original shape. So that means when the force is removed. It regains its original shape, whereas the fluids continues to. So that is the thing. The, un unless uh, otherwise you are continuing the applying of the stress, it will continuously flow. And after removal of the force, also the fl fluids will never uh, regain their shape here. So here, deformation will be continuous. Whereas 
deformation disappears in case of solids. The solids deformation will disappear within the elastic limit. That means it uh, gets its original shape. So if it is a square shape, it will gain its square shape as well. But whereas the fluids, there will be flow. If you apply stress, there will be continuous uh, flow will be there in the case of fluids. So they, they will never uh, come back or they will never regain its original shape uh, after removal of the force in case of fluids. Here, till now we have discussed the differences between the solids and uh, liquids, solids and fluids otherwise. Okay. So solids and fluids, solid is a rigid material, fluid is a non-rigid material, easily flexible, easily movable. So we have seen the differences, one thing is elastic limit, within the elastic limit, uh, it regains its position and whereas fluid will not regain its position and stress is proportional to strain or strain is proportional to strain for both the materials within the elastic limit. So, solids will regain its original shape, whereas the liquids or fluids will continuously to flow and it will never gain its original position, original shape, even after removal of the flow. Those are the differences we saw till now. Now, we will see the differences between liquid and gases. So, here the material is divided into mainly two parts, solids and fluids. So, whereas fluids are divided into another two parts, the liquids and gases. So, liquid is a fluid and gas is also a fluid here. So, here if you see the common characteristics, key points are here, common characteristics. That means the both the liquids and gases. So, both are fluids. That's why they will have so many common characteristics. But if you go inside, in these two fluids. These are different types of fluids. That's why there must be some distinction or differences. So, there are many distinctive characteristics between the liquid and gas. So, here we can see the what are the differences. So, here this is difficult to compress, easy to compress. See, the liquid is uh, normally is very difficult to compress, whereas the gases is uh, easily to compress. So that's why liquid is we consider it as a incompressible material. Incompressible material. So liquid is a incompressible. But where gas is can become compressible to a multiple number of times. So that means huge volume of gas can be converted into small quantity of small volume of the gas. Mass will be the same but volume can be reduced. That's why it is compressible. Whereas the liquids which will have same mass will have same volume. So this practically or it may be regarded as the incompressible material liquid. But whereas the gas, if you take 100 grams of gas, mass of 100 grams. So the, the 100 grams of mass or 1 kg of mass will occupy a bigger volume if it is poured into the vessel, big vessel and it will occupy a smaller vessel also uh, if you compress it. So that means the gas is a compressible material and liquid is a incompressible material. So liquid is difficult to compress whereas gases are very easy to compress. So that is the difference between the liquid and gas. Here you can see another key points here in the differences between the liquid and gases. So another key points are fixed volume, free surface is formed. So what is the fixed volume? Volume is fixed. That means the liquid occupies the fixed volume wherever you keep. So bigger vessel, smaller vessel. If you pour the liquid, it occupies the same volume. So whereas gas, if you pour in a smaller vessel, it occupies smaller volume, if you pour in a bigger vessel, it occupies the bigger volume. So that is the fixed volume and more volume, more or variable volume. So fixed volume is meant for that liquids, whereas 
variable volume is meant for the gases. So, another difference is that free surface is formed. So, what is the free surface is if you pour a liquid in any vessel, top will have some surface. So, which is called the free surface. Top means what? The top of the liquid and the it touches the uh, air, air, the gas. So, that surface uh, is free. Whereas, the gases will not have such that. If you pour in any vessel, it may be bigger vessel or it may be smaller vessel. So, it occupies no such uh, criteria of uh, free surface. Only liquids will show the free surface and liquids <coughs> will never show the free surface. So, that is the difference. Here, the differences are fixed volume. So, that means volumes and free surface. The volume, if you see the volume, the liquids will maintain same volume, but whereas the gases are not. And free surface, liquids will show the free surface, whereas gases are not. <coughs> Those are the differences uh, between liquids and gases. And another uh, differences uh, between the liquid and gases. So here, easy to compress. So that means gas is comparatively easy to compress. We can easily compress. So that's why you can see the uh, home uh, stove. That means uh, cylinder gas stove in our homes. So the, com the gas is continuously coming out of the cylinder for days together. That means the quantity mass is same, but volume is different. Because of the compress the compression, the more uh, gas we are uh, occupying the, the small quantity of cylinder gas cylinder. So here, uh, uh, gas is easy to compress. Then, if you see the B point here, changes of volume. So how the volume changes. See here how you can see the pressures are large. So if you apply a more pressure, so volume will become very very less because of the application of pressure. If you uh, do not apply the pressure, that means if you are if you remove the pressure, then the volume increases. So it cannot normally be neglected and are related to changes of temperature. Temperature is also a one thing about the volume. So, if you want to change the volume, one thing is that one is pressure. So, by applying the pressure, volume will be changed for the gases, not for the liquids. And also, temperature. So, if you uh, increase the temperature, so not only pressure, if you increase the temperature, depending upon the temperature, also volume will change. So, if you use high temperature, high volume will be occupied by the gases and not by the liquids. <coughs> so another key point is here, no fixed volume. So, no fixed volume means if you take a liquid, you pour anywhere. You pour, you pour small cylinder, a small vessel, a glass, tumbler, uh, flask, whatever, wherever it may be. If you pour some quantity of uh, liquid, one kg of liquid, it occupies the same volume. Wherever you put small vessel, big vessel, whatever it may be, volume will not change for the liquids. Whereas the gases, if you take one kg of gas, if you put small vessel or big vessel, volume is not fixed. So it occupies entire volume of the small vessel or entire volume of the big vessel. So irrespective of the shape also, so irrespective of the size also. So if size is Varied also, uh, volume also will be varied for the gases, not for the uh, liquids. Okay. And uh, free surface. You see, do not form the free surface because it occupies total volume of the vessel. No such a free surface uh, thing is there for the gas. Whereas the liquids, it will have, it will maintain some free surface and it will maintain a fixed volume. So that is the
difference between the liquids and gases. And if you see the difference between the liquid and gases, you can see this figure. So it is a liquid, it is a gas, it is a free surface. So if you pour in a vessel, so it shows the free surface like this. It is nothing but the contact with the air at particular height. So this is a free surface. Whereas the gas, it is there is no such a free surface here. If you pour the gas in a vessel, so it occupies total volume and also it enters into the uh, atmosphere. So that is the difference between the liquid and gas here. And uh, if you see the differences between the solids, liquids, gases, that means solids and fluids, and uh, fluids are divided into liquids and gases. Here, this is a gas, this figure shows the gas, this figure shows the liquid, and this figure shows the solid. So in the gas, the molecules are disorder, and uh, in the liquid, in case of liquids, Molecules maintain short range of order, whereas the solids will maintain the molecules at a long range of order. So these are the differences between the liquids and solids. Today, uh, we learned initially the topic is distinction between a fluid and a solid in the course of fluid mechanics and course outcomes or CO1, CO2. Uh, CO6 uh, till CO6. So CO1 surface tension, CO2 law of viscosity, CO3 capillarity, CO4 surface tension applications, CO5 compressibility, CO6 is the friction, fluid friction in a pipe flow. These are the course outcomes students able to learn after the completion of the course and also learn the differences between solids and liquids. So it is a strain is proportional to stress within the elastic limits, both the elastic and both the solids and fluids. Another difference is that <coughs> deformation disappears uh, for the uh, liquids, whereas gases, this, uh, uh, solids will uh, maintain the elastic limits, hence deformation will be lost. That means it gains original position after removal of the force that is a solid whereas the continuous flow will occur for the fluids as the application of the load. And uh, if you see the difference between the liquids and gases, they are having common characteristics, but they are having many distinctive characteristics. So here, uh, liquid is difficult to compress, it is called incompressible, whereas gas is not uh, incompressible. So the fixed volume, that means uh, liquids will maintain a fixed volume on free surface and uh, Gases will not maintain the fixed volume, and gases will not maintain the free surface. And uh, uh, gases are easy to compress, and changes volume depending upon the application of the pressure and application of the temperature. So temperature increases, volume increases. Pressure increases, volume decreases. So here, gas will have no fixed volume, and gas will not maintain the free surface. So this is the free surface liquid and this is the gas. So thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.